All right, it's hot. It's basically summer. I got a fan going. Forgive the background noise. Let's do my favorite tag of the year, the mid-year freakout tag. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Theo. Thanks for hanging out with me. We're going to do my mid-year freakout tag. I'm not really freaking out. I'm enjoying all my books. I know exactly pretty much what I'm going to read for the rest of the year. I'm allowing myself to mood read. I got some buddy read plans, some read-alongs, all that stuff. I'm just kind of chilling, to be honest. So let's talk about what I've enjoyed, what I haven't, biggest surprises, disappointments, best books, worst books, all that stuff in this tag. Question number one is best book you've read so far this year in 2023. I'm going to bend the rules a little bit like I always do. I have two for this one for a specific reason. The best book up until this month that I had ever read ever, and it's definitively my favorite fantasy book of all time, is A Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin. That's book three in A Song of Ice and Fire. That book was an absolute delight. I, and it's arguably one of the best books ever written uh, structurally and just there was so much packed into that book. It never felt over long, even though it's over a thousand pages. It benefits from a beautifully, you know, beautifully done story in the first two books. And it's just this like climax of events and character plots and everything starts to come together. And there were so many moments that just left me with my jaw on the floor. Like I couldn't believe what I was reading and the ending was really cool. And it just like, there was nothing I didn't like about that book and where the series is going. Uh, I have yet to continue with it because I was just on such a high with Storm of Swords, but that's on the horizon very, very quickly. Up until this month, that was probably the best book that I'd ever read ever in my life. However, I recently read Boy's Life by Robert McCammon. And this, I have to say, if we're not talking fantasy, this is the best book I've ever read. This is my favorite book that I've ever read, I think, when not talking about specifically fantasy and specifically the high that I got reading Storm of Swords. Robert McCammon is often compared to Stephen King. If you like Stephen King, you're going to absolutely love Robert McCammon. Just put what you're reading down right now and go read this. And very much like Stephen King, he's classified as horror often, but he writes in so many genres. This one I would categorize as like speculative fiction. It's basically a coming of age story about a boy in a fictional town in Alabama in the 60s. A lot of themes are discussed, but it's basically about this kid growing up and the town is changing and he's changing and you know, he becomes an adult and you see the world and it's magic through the eyes of someone who's growing up and experiencing everything. And the, the characters are all interesting. The story flows at the heart of this and it actually opens with a murder mystery and the mystery gets sort of wrapped up and the end is very gratifying. And I would say the ending, I. This book actually made me tear up. I could read the ending over and over again. It was perfection. Do yourself a favor. Just stop reading what you're reading. Go read Boy's Life and uh, find another favorite book. Robert McCammon has become maybe, because I'm reading a book of his right now, the first book in his Matthew Corbett series. He may end up very soon becoming my all-time favorite author. Based on what I've read, based on my my enjoyment of his books overall, just the, the structure of them, the technical, like the writing, like just everything put together. I think he's gonna be uh, one of my, my favorite author of all time. I think I have a couple more books to try, but I'm pretty sure that's where it's heading. So Boy's Life just blew me away. Question number two is best sequel you read so far this year. This is very easy. Um, I read the Greenbone Saga this year and book two, Jade War, was one of the best book twos that I personally have ever read. I actually gave every book in the trilogy five stars, starting with Jade City. I loved the, the story and the environment and it, the story just builds, the world gets more uh, expanded, the relationships get more complex, the characters evolve, they all have their own arcs, everything like I just enjoyed everything about this trilogy and Jade War, you know, it's very easy to get what people call middle book syndrome. This one doesn't suffer, at, uh, you know, at all from that, in my opinion, um, it expanded where I wanted it to expand. It didn't do, you know, anything that it wasn't trying to do. Um, it leads into the, the conclusion quite well. 
it doesn't, you know, drag on anywhere. And there's a lot of satisfying moments in here. And with all the characters, so much happens in here. And, you know, it really does a good job building on Jade City, which I absolutely loved. This story is basically, you know, about a family, mafia type clan family, Asian inspired and they have this hereditary ability to harness the power of jade and it makes them have uh unique special abilities and it's all about the green it's all about the jade and the control over it and these warring families or clans and the politics it's, it's really a very heavy political family drama punctuated with awesome martial arts and you know school training and you know business and mafia type uh meetings and things like that so super cool if you like mafia movies godfather type stuff if you like martial arts if you like asian fantasy i think you'll find a lot to like here i really enjoyed it definitely best book number two that i've read this year Number three is a new release you haven't read yet, but want to. I was hoping to get to this this month, uh, but maybe next month? I don't know. This is James Islington's The Will of the Many. I got this on release day. Don't really know too much about it. Petrick really likes it. A lot of people really like it. Um, I like James Islington's writing. This one, I think there's like Roman vibes in it. There's magic school. I think there's like Red Rising type vibes, apparently. I don't really know what to tell you. All I know is that this came out and I bought it and haven't read it yet. So I'm planning on it soon, I guess. So yeah, new release that I haven't got to yet. Will of the many. Number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. To be honest with you guys, I don't know what's coming out in the next six months. Like, I don't really know. I have so many books to get to. I know exactly the priorities that I'm going to try and read. I have more books than I can read for the next however many years. I'm going to go on a little bit of a book buying ban. I have a book haul coming, but a lot, some of those were gifted uh, and they're books that I acquired over like the last few months. But from now to the end of the year, I don't really know what else is coming out. There's nothing that is completely, you know, uh, that I'm super excited about that's necessarily on my radar for a series that I've started. Um, I do want to start Red Rising. I know that that book comes out like next month, the next one. So yeah, I, I don't really know. For now, there's not really anything that I have my eye on, but if there's something that I should keep my eye out for, uh, maybe let me know. Number five is Biggest Disappointment. This one is a little bit sad because so far this author is kind of an auto buy author for me. Like I really enjoy most of his books. Like I've read a lot of his books. I think I've read eight of his books, nine maybe now, I'm not sure. This one is run by Blake Crouch and this is a thriller. Um, it's, it's short. This man wakes up and the world has kind of gone to shit and he hears his family's name on the radio as like another target because people are being targeted and killed. The whole world's kind of gone insane and people are after him so he gets his family and he starts escaping and they got to basically get away from people and uh, they don't know who they can trust it's kind of crazy it's a little bit like you know surviving in the wilderness they go to this cabin and then they got to hike through the mountains and stuff it's a survival thriller and i just didn't really like it i didn't love the characters the family was kind of annoying the kids were kind of annoying arguably very realistic i know a lot of people really enjoyed this uh, and most people who read this fly through it and, and enjoy it. I actually dragged with this one a bit. Didn't love it. I love most of his books. Um, and yeah, this one just didn't really do what I wanted it to. So a bit disappointing considering uh, Blake Crouch being one of my favorite authors, to be honest. Right, number six is Biggest Surprise. Uh, this one's like... For all of these, I have multiple answers. I'm going to limit this to one. This one is a book that I read this month as well, and I absolutely love it. That is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is a Greek myth, Homer's Iliad kind of retelling the lead up to the Trojan War. And I thought it was brilliant. The writing is beautiful. The story is great. It's at the heart of it, a romance between Achilles and his best friend, Patroclus. And it's told through the uh, point of view of Patroclus and you get a sense of his loyalty and devotion and love for Achilles. And it just does everything so well. It draws from one of the most important pieces of literature in history, which is Homer's Iliad, and of course, then the Odyssey. Um, and it does it really respectfully. She is extremely educated. I think she taught ancient Greek or something. She has masters in 
PhDs and stuff like she knows what she's talking about and the way she was able to put this together in a nice little standalone it just it was wonderful I really enjoyed it I didn't think I would love it as much as I did I knew it was going to be good I understood that people really you know uh, enjoy this book and it comes highly recommended it's not a hundred percent my cup of tea like on paper it's a myth retelling which I don't haven't read a whole lot of them and I, I didn't really know if I was going to enjoy that. Uh, it's a queer romance with Achilles and Patroclus. It's a romance at the heart of it. Like I don't typically read romance books. If there's well done romance in my books, I don't really care who it is and what it is or whatever. I don't love certain tropes like love triangles and things like that. This one doesn't really have anything that I typically dislike in my books. It was done beautifully and it really was moving and, uh, almost a tearjerker at the end. So yeah, if you if you haven't read this one, I would highly recommend it. Number seven, favorite new author, debut or new to you author. Um, this guy, as I mentioned, is not necessarily a new to me author. I first tried him last year and I fell in love and I continue to just be like completely impressed by him. And uh, that is Robert McCammon. So I read Boy's Life this month and it has become, aside from Storm of Swords, like I told you, my ultimate favorite book that I've ever read. Uh, it's just beautiful. I really vibe with his writing. His writing is so diverse, kind of like Stephen King. His dialogue is excellent. His characterizations, completely immersive. His imagery that he uses, his his he's just amazing. I, I really like Robert McC uh, McCammon. And you know, sometimes you find an author that you just click with, and I feel like that's what's happened. It's completely like five out of five across the board for everything I've read so far. I'm just about done book three uh, by him. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that that trend continues. It's a little too early to tell, but he's definitely become an absolute new favorite. And uh, again, I wouldn't be surprised if in the next couple books, he's become my favorite author. Number eight is newest fictional crush. No. Number nine is newest favorite character. This one is actually really easy. That is Drust the Legend by David Gemmel. I read Legend this year. I did a dedicated review. I absolutely loved it. Uh, highly recommend it. There's a lot more to the story if you know the context under which in which it was written and I talk about that in the video. And then I wanted so much more Drust and I wanted his backstory. He's this grizzled old warrior that comes back for this last battle and Everyone knows him for his crazy exploits. He's called the Death Walker, and he's just such a gangster character. And I wanted more from him, so I read the the prequel, which is I think published book number six or something in the Drenai series, or just his sixth book that he published. I'm not sure. And it's the prequel, and so we meet Dress here at 15 through the story and the backstory for him uh, and how he becomes the legend. I was almost going to spoil kind of what what makes him you know, what the quest is, but uh, yeah, just go ahead and read Legend. And if you want more Drust, don't continue with the next one. Um, go ahead and read his backstory in the first Chronicles of Drust the Legend. Number 10 is a book that made you cry. This is a little emotional right now, and it's actually a little bit more special than it otherwise would have been. Unfortunately, that is The Road by Cormac McCarthy, who unfortunately passed away uh, very recently. And I read Blood Meridian, I believe it was last year, and that was an experience. I mean, the guy can write. His prose is like poetry. I don't know how to explain his writing. It's one of the only books on Goodreads that I didn't rate because I was like, I like, I, I can't. I, can't. I, I don't know how to explain. Did I enjoy it? I don't know. It was brilliant, but did I have a good time? Did I enjoy it even though I didn't have a good time? Like, I don't understand. Um, this book, very different. This one is... Uh, it reads a little bit easier than Blood Meridian. Still not a whole lot of punctuation and Cormac McCarthy does whatever he wants. But uh, basically this is about a son and a father in this post-apocalyptic, absolutely desolate wasteland of America, just making their way to like the coast. And it's really, I also did a review about this one actually. You can go ahead and check that out. My thoughts and my spoiler thoughts at the end for what I think this book meant and why I think it's special. Really, it's a father-son's relationship. And I have a close relationship with my father. And this is about growing up and it's a metaphor about life and the torch passing from, you know, to from generations and being able to take care of somebody and instill values in, you know, uh, to, that will last long after you're gone. It's just, it's just beautiful, to be honest. I really enjoyed it, and I would highly recommend this. And I think this book could mean a lot of different things to different people. So go ahead and give this one a shot. This one made me tear up. 
uh, thinking about family and my dad. Good relationship in this book and it's just very powerful and very moving. Number 11 is a book that made you happy. I had an absolute blast with The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch, book one in the Gentleman Bastard series. This was such a fun time. We have thieves and we have uh, a heist and we have like an orphan ragtag group of, you know, friends. We have found family uh, in a big way. This was so good, so witty, so clever. The, I, I don't want to say mystery, but like the plot and just the, it was amazing. The world building, the atmosphere created in this, the shimmering kind of luminescent buildings rem uh, remaining from like, I guess this magical race or like whatever that's no longer there. And we don't really know too much about that in book one, but there's like Venetian canals and beautiful architecture in this kind of like, like I said, Venetian type setting. And it was, it just worked so well. I imagine you know, gray mist over little bridges and like lanterns and stuff. What a great atmosphere. I had a really good time with this. If you haven't tried this, this knocked my socks off. It's a near masterpiece. I gushed about it in my wrap up. This really impressed me. I didn't think that I would like it so much. There's a blurb by George R. R. Martin on the front it says a fresh, original and engrossing tale by a bright new voice. And I couldn't have said that better myself. Like this is definitely uh, revered by a lot of people for a lot of reasons. And I'm hoping we get more because I know that there I have the first three and I think this is going to be like five six seven books I'm not sure I hope that when I read the next two I don't have to wait forever it's been a long time but I think the journey is still worth it so I'm gonna get to book two sooner than later because I was really impressed with this one all right number 12 is the most beautiful book that you've received or bought so far this year so this one so I haven't really bought a whole lot of special editions not not any folio copies or anything with like you know, gold edges or, or, you know, like illustrated, like I haven't really bought a bunch of crazy books this year, but I did get this book, which is actually a signed copy. And this is a day of fallen night by Samantha Shannon. This is the second book that like comes after priory of the orange tree. The cover is beautiful and it's just one of the nicer covers I think I own. And it's also signed, so I was, it was just a really nice book. I picked it up. I really wanna read Priory, I haven't read it yet, I know. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of books that I've bought recently, this year, this is probably one of the sexiest books uh, that I own, honestly, at this point. So yeah, I'm gonna choose this one, and uh, I'm gonna go on a book buying ban for a while, as I mentioned, probably, but like, the first book that I'm going to buy after that is probably a super sexy, uh, expensive edition that I'll show off in another video. So for now, this is this is the nice one that I chose. And finally, number 13, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? All, all of them. I need to read all, all the books. Uh, I have to wrap up series. I have to finish Live Ship. I have to finish um, A Song of Ice and Fire, at least the books that are out. I want to start Red Rising. I put out a, a community post asking people to vote on a book or a series you want me to read. There was a bunch of choices. Red Rising was the runaway winner. Um, I want to, I'm doing a read along, hosting a read along with the Brothers Gwyn and RJ Reads uh, starting next month for The Faithful and the Fallen. I gotta read those. So tons of books. I have so much on the docket. Uh, my, my patrons are voting on a book that's gonna be part of my July TBR, uh, hopefully. And uh, yeah, so I have a lot to read. I have a lot on my shelves. I don't really need to buy any. I have books to read for a long time. So that's all for me. Uh, if you have a video that I can check out, if you've done this tag, let me know. I'd love to go and watch it. This is my favorite tag of the year. A nice kind of mid-year, midpoint check-in. What have you liked? What have you disliked? Uh, what surprised you? What disappointed you? All that stuff. I really enjoy this one. I'm not going to tag anyone. I was tagged uh, by Ben over at Bengus Khan. Thank you. One, a great channel. One of my favorite guys on BookTube. And I'm not going to tag anyone myself because a lot of people are starting to do this one themselves and I don't know who's done it, who hasn't. So if you've done this one, let me know. I'll check out your video. If you wanted to maybe just answer these and put them in the comments, I'd love to read those too. So for now, that's it for me. I will catch you real soon on the next video. I hope you have a good one. Talk to you soon.